Oi, it's Aluka here again, and today I'm so excited that it's the kickoff of Limit Break, which is a new mentorship program uh, had by Anissa. I'm gonna do a very, very quick talk there, my journey and the things I wish I knew when I started to have a mentor. It took me such a long time in my career to decide to have a mentor. I don't know, I felt that perhaps if I was trying to get a mentor, I would show some weakness. But if you are right now in a moment where you want to take a leap in your career or you're about to start a business, the best thing you can do is to connect with the right people, with the right skill set. The challenging questions they're going to ask you and the silly questions you're going to ask them will help you so much. The importance of being hugely self-aware of the things you don't know and the things you do know and then you get Jedi powers. Thank you. I, I went through this moment of kind of reconciling myself, like my professional self with my inner self and, and went into a mode of anxiety again and etc. But I kind of found a way that, that I, I can actually be very honest and start being very vulnerable with people. The things that I, I learned that I should have done before was to build a good networking around me when, when I came to this country. So nowadays I have three mentors which I rely loads on them and they are very particular for different reasons. One of them is the challenger as a call. So he's the kind of guy who says when, when I'm, when I, when I'm doubting myself, he says, he says to me, oh, come on, really? You can do this, right? And I'm like, oh, can I? <laughs> uh, the other one's the cheerleader. So it's someone who's like, yes, of course, everything is fine. Nothing's gonna break. And the other one is someone who's got a very deep knowledge into the things that I wanna learn about. <laughs> and I usually have these topics kind of that I revisit with my family on a yearly basis. So I have a set of goals of things that I wanna learn and I want to get in touch with. Even if you don't know what you want and what you wanna learn from your mentors, do uh, uh, question yourself and even share this with them because maybe they're gonna help you find exactly what are the questions that you need to, to find for yourselves, right? Uh, the second one, I made some notes here. It's uh, <laughs> on my hand. Uh, it's relationship building. It's like, this is so crucial. And, and I remember that there were moments in my life that I was kind of getting very close to potential mentors and they, and I just left the relationship to the side. I just didn't follow up. I didn't go and, you know, ask questions. I didn't say, Hey, let's meet. I didn't do enough to keep them close. So doing that is very, very fundamental because building in this relationship over time you're going to see how you're going to start having very very different value uh, at different stages in your career if you progress beyond the six months and the third point is asking the silliest questions ever your silliness is not silly at all is something that a lot of people has trouble with and even potentially your mentor is going to learn from the silly questions i can't compete with all the ones coming out of uni and stuff like that why not? That's the thing. Every time that I feel like I cannot do this anymore because, you know, I'm not that young, I challenge myself. I said, but why not? It's like, why, why can't I actually use the things that I learned to transform that into, you know, things that I want to learn? And then, and then you keep your mind very fresh and very young and you don't look, you don't look 40 at all. So you don't need to worry. <laughs> so, you, you know, what's, what's funny is like the way that I think is the no you already have. You just don't need to ask, right? So you might as well ask because there's 50, 50 chance that you're going to have a yes. I know it's very simplistic to say that, but it's like sometimes we don't think about that and just we don't do it. When you're making a game, it's different to if you were making like, I don't know, if you're building a tech product, like, I don't know, Dropbox or Airbnb, whatever it's like, you, you're solving a very particular problem. So your goal with the product is to, is to be functional. Right. Of course, there's a lot of things there that would help spread the word about the product, but functionality is very important. But when you're making a game, it's so subjective, right? Even people, even publishers who have been doing this for so many years, the, the way that they look at a particular game is very much about appeal to wider audiences. So from, a, from an art perspective, a, you want to make it in a way that kids to to parents to teenagers everyone would look at that pixar style right 
is like for everyone. So everyone would, would be able to, to play the game. Because then when you do that, you have like a, a much, much wider opportunity to make money. What I'm gonna say to you is very, it's very odd because like it might not work. And if it doesn't work, it's not about you, right? So when it doesn't work, you just need to say, okay, it's not working, but it's not about me. As you're saying, it's, it's a company that I want to create value and amazing things for people. And, you know, chances are some things work, some things don't work, right? And then you move on and do the other one. What is the biggest challenge now? Biggest challenge? Yeah. Um, the other thing you said on your videos about mm. confidence and competence, yeah. I think. Uh, mm. And then I think there's that. I think um, finding other people to work with. Mm. I think if you feel that you need someone to bounce ideas and to help you, you should totally make as a goal. Yeah. You should totally go for it and say, okay, on the, in the next six months, I'm going to dedicate X amount of my time to, to pitch my, my game to a bunch of people who I think have complementary skills and they could become your co-founder. Because mm -hmm. uh, you never know, there might be a lot of people in the same situation as you who are coders who don't have your skills. Or, you know, what, whatever else that you think would complement your skills, right? And they're thinking the same way. They're like, oh, but maybe I need someone, but I don't know even how to find them, right? And that affects your confidence as well, right? Because you're like, oh, I cannot do all those things that I wanted to do. And yeah, and then I'm not that confident to say I'm doing the best game in the world because that's what you should be telling everyone. But do, do they launch, they put marketing money and everything? So Yeah, this is what I'm curious about with the marketing. Yeah, you have to ask, yeah. yeah. Because a lot of them don't really say what they do for marketing. Yeah, I yes. I never see them, because I see indies like, talking about their games, but I never see the publisher often. Um, it's interesting, isn't it? Like what? Yeah, I think you have to demand. Mm. I that, think, yes. Yeah. You have to ask specifically. So, and again, that goes back to believing that what you have is really special because then you say, look, I want to work with a publisher who's gonna really help me on this, this and that and marketing. And so for me, it's very important that you tell me exactly what you're gonna do. And if, even if they waffle, you just go back and say, okay, but what are you gonna do? How much money are you gonna put into marketing? Yes. Right, it's like where are you gonna market this game? How, how would you present this to the world? So you can be very specific, you're like, look, I believe in this game, I'm good at doing this, I'm good at doing that, I love this part, but I need you to look after marketing, I need to look after community. You know, it's like, even if they say, oh, but that's gonna, then the deal is gonna be 60% us, 40% to you. Fine, because at least you have 40% of something that it's a bigger pie and you're not doing the things you hate doing, right? So I think having this kind of self-awareness of the things that you enjoy doing and you're happy to allow others to do the things you don't enjoy, that clarity will help you a lot on the negotiation, I think. Find the people who are doing the things that you don't enjoy doing because that will, that will literally transform your, your, your life and, and your entrepreneurial journey totally.